It's been a while since we've heard new panda bear material and you're currently readying panda bear meets the Grim Reaper. Yeah, tell us about the material, you know, I know you mentioned it's going to be a lot more sampling. How would you describe the transition in sound and you know, the body of work as, you know, as it's upcoming, how would you describe it? Um, I suppose it's sounding a bit like a mixture of the last two albums a little bit. Um, but the last one called Tomboy felt a lot more kind of stark and uh, dour in a way, and this one's more, has more of a sense of humor, I think, and uh, maybe it's a bit more playful and uh, not really full-on goofy, but uh, definitely kind of plays around a little bit more, uh, a bit more lighthearted, I would say. Yeah, and you, you mentioned a bit more playful, a bit more humorous, I mean, you stated Panda Bear meets the Grim Reaper, it's, it's sort of, it's like a comic genre, it's not actually, actually referring to death, but no, you know, yeah. you said it's meant as a celebration of the fact that new growth sometimes requires death. Tell yeah. us about that. I feel like sometimes with words and stuff like that that I'll write for, for songs, it'll mean one thing to me or a group of things in the moment that I'm doing it and then a couple of years down the road it kind of seems like a different thing. You know what I mean? But I think it's safe to say that a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, a lot of the themes revolve around changing in various ways and, and uh, sometimes those changes involve kind of severe um, uh, death-like um, mm. movements in a way. In terms of the creative process and, and the spark, is it still all about you know having all these little ideas and then kind of solving them like sort of like puzzle? Is that yeah, how your creative sure. process is like? I, I find it um, kind of difficult to do things any other way. It's typical for me to, I feel like I'll have these little moments where it might last as long as a week or a week and a half and maybe as short as an hour or something like that where I feel like something really good happens and then the rest of the time it's just kind of like firing blanks and you know nothing really works out but you kind of keep hammering away at it in the hopes that you'll hit one of those kind of sweet spots again. But Generally speaking, when I make songs, I feel like it's just sort of collecting all those good moments and trying to make something cohesive and, and sort of graceful with it. Back in regards to samples, tell us about using samples that are designed more for performance rather than studio production this time around. Um, oh, I, I, did a, I made a lot of these myself rather than just sort of taking little bits and pieces from other people's music. Some of it is uh, like companies will make these um, these discs or collections of uh, sounds and rhythms and stuff like that that they'll sell to producers to use. And I sort of like the challenge of making something that was so kind of common in this way and try to make something really sort of impossible or something that nobody else can make. You know what I mean? So there's a bit of that. Um, and otherwise, it's just sort of me playing various instruments and taking little samples of it. I also use quite a bit of drum breaks. Uh, again, really common. I feel like uh, it might be a bit hard to tell because they're sort of submerged under a whole bunch of other stuff. But the drum breaks that I used, I think, are really uh, sort of hackneyed breaks. They're not really like. Like digging in crates for crazy <laughs> breaks and stuff like that. Tell us about the live element. I understand visual components are you know integral to your live shows, and yeah. you know you've got Danny Perez on board, and you're mm -hmm. sort of going for a more of a sci-fi feel. Tell us yeah, about this. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, we didn't really talk about it too much. It just sort of turned out that way in uh, a stroke of good fortune. Because I feel like the the way I was doing the songs last year was a little more direct and aggressive. And this year they got a little more kind of spacey and um, not quite like spacey, but uh, kind of muted and, and pulled apart a little bit. But I feel like Danny's visuals have this sort of weird alien um, 
shiny sort of sci-fi feel to them, and it, I think it suits the music, uh, the new way that I'm playing the songs, which is really reflective of what the album sounds like. Um, I think they, those two things work together really, really smooth. Do you feel it gives it that added dimension and, and a, a kind of like a unique formula when you're playing live? I think so. I mean, I think the, the live versions of the songs do in part because of the way I play them, but also in, maybe in much larger part due to Danny's visuals will be kind of a different, have a different feeling than now. Mm -hmm. And you know, you mentioned sci-fi, I mean, was, was there anything that you perhaps read, heard, or watched that's kind of crept its way into production for this forthcoming album? Um, <clears throat> sort of more after the fact, actually, and it might have something to do with the artwork. I'm not really totally sure, we're still kind of putting that all together, but uh, Danny and I watched a, a documentary about Jodorowsky's Dune, and um, I think I'd watched a, a documentary about Mobius a while ago, too. Again, uh, after the after I'd made a bunch of this stuff, but uh, I really like that, that Mobius and H.R. Geiger kind of, more than Mobius stuff. The Geiger stuff's a little gnarly. Um, I like sort of that fantastical space world kind of <laughs> stuff. It's a bit corny, but I like it. In regards to your voice, when you sometimes when you describe as dreamlike, distorted, hidden, buried, how would you assess the role of your voice for this particular release? Uh, it's pretty out in front, maybe more than, uh, certainly more than the last album. Uh, I like for most of the songs, it's more kind of direct. It might be tweaked a little bit, but it's not really reverbed out so much as in the previous releases. That wasn't totally a conscious like thing that we set out to do, but uh, I think the music lends itself to that style of vocal production. Yeah, and I know another thing that's been mentioned often, you know, with yourself is um, hailing from Portugal now, and you know, tell us about the impetus of living there and the drive. And you know, I know you like the seafood, the coffee there. I mean, what is it about the place? I mean, you know, does it kind of breed creativity for you? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't believe that I'd be less productive anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like it's a place that suits me and suits my temperament. At this time, for a while, uh, I lived in New York City before Lisbon, and sort of a high energy environment, uh, like this. And uh, I, I was maybe 20, between 20 and 25, and that really felt like the exact, you know, the perfect place for me then. Um, but then after a while, I kind of felt like all that energy and all that sort of um, activity. I wasn't really prepared for it anymore, mm -hmm. and so going to Lisbon, which is still a big, a big city, but it, everything feels like it's like turning the the tape speed down. It's still the same stuff, but now it's kind of like slowed down in a way that I feel like I can handle a little bit better. With regards to when you're not on tour, when you're not crafting new music, you know, generally, how do how do you like to unwind? Um, Various ways. I, uh, I like to go to the movies. I like to go to the movies with my kids these days. Um, I haven't taken the kids to a, like a, a football match, but that's next on the agenda. Tell us about you know, the footballing aspect. I mean, I know you, you mentioned also that Portugal has got some sacred footballers, and you know, it's, it's absolutely huge there. Have you kind of taken that on board? Is that kind of something that's. Yeah, I mean, my whole life, I, I grew up with an older brother who was uh, an athlete and still his occupation he teaches people how to play tennis and also competes, but um, maybe because of him I've always had a, a thing for athletics and sports. And I feel like the older I get, the more kind of obsessive I get about sports and paying attention to all that stuff. Uh, so going to Living in Portugal, football is really like you know, a good 90% of the attention. 
that people have for athletics, so uh, it's sort of inevitable that I would suck it in a little bit. Um, I've fallen off a little bit, but I still uh, follow one of the teams there. I love going to the stadium. Um, I'm not sure it really, or in what way it, it leads into the, the music making, but <laughs> I'd imagine it's there somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I'm finding, you know, as you head forward as an esteemed musician and someone who's been commended and applauded for your work, you know, what's your philosophy? What kind of, you know, exploration do you crave? And, you know, what, you know what's your philosophy and what do you hope to maintain as you head forward? Uh, I just want to make stuff that I think sounds cool. Um, I feel like I spent a lot of time kind of stressing out about, you know, what, what's the next thing that I can do or in what way can I make stuff that's more exciting to me. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about that kind of stuff, so every album, if I feel like I've done that in some form, then that gives me enough juice to move to the next thing. So, so far, so good.